But you've got to remember, we've been talking about the merge for five years. Okay. So, you know, um, let me be the skeptic. This is my largest position right now. ETH, ETH has moved up and, and put it at the top of the heap of my 32 positions. I, I'm a skeptic till I see it happen because you got to think about who loses in the merge. You know, and, and if you're if you're a miner right now, you're not loving this merge idea. And there's a lot of capital tied up in that. And so when it happens, I'll believe it. But we have seen this thing punted down the road five times. So what makes you so confident it's going to happen? Well, they get somebody in Washington to say that's OK if you're a public pension plan. They yeah, need the policy on, on crypto in the sense, even if they only regulate Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mean, so many people in the crypto world are against regulation, but I say that's false. If you get regulation, you get more capital. You've made a great case right there for why we want policy on Ethereum. When I talk to sovereign wealth, I don't care if it's Norway or the UAE or Saudi, they want Bitcoin. They have not got to the analysis that we've just gone through. They want the proxy uh, of Bitcoin uh, and they want that volatility. I think it, uh, I think for financial services, I agree that ETH, the gas fees are a joke. That's the problem. It's, it, they're too, it, and I, this will help solve for it. But if that becomes the default uh, platform for other digital assets, that will help. But in the immediate term, the demand is for one to three percent of a portfolio, a standard. These 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 sovereign wealth portfolios look like this. No more than 20 percent in any one sector, no more than five percent in any one name. So you're never going to find, you know, Boeing or Bank of America more than 5% in a $900 billion fund. All the indexers know that. It's a really standard format. When you ask them, if you could buy a digital asset, which one would it be and what allocation? It's about 50 basis points on the low end, up to 300 basis points on the high end. And 99% of the time, they say Bitcoin. That's all they know. And so it's going to take a while for that demand to come. And I think it would be number two. And they certainly like USDC and they love Solana and Polygon. You go down the list based on market cap. I, I get it. But right but now, if we had policy on Bitcoin, I swear I'm, to you, the price, of, the price would be $60,000 in, in two weeks. The reason I'm long now with all this volatility, we have 20% of our operating company's assets. That's our max in crypto across 32 positions. I'm about to add pollen which is a decentralized telco. We've done a lot of research on, we like it. Uh, we think there's a lot of interest there, but that's a really fringe project. The point is, I'm trying to get ahead of the day, because I mean, we're all agreeing that at some point we're going to get policy. I need to be long before that happens, because that's the reward you're going to get, is when that stuff gets indexed, and I, whoever gets to index it, the demand for at least Bitcoin and Ethereum out of the beginning is insatiable. It is insatiable at the sovereign and pension level. And for all the skeptics that, that are, you know, don't like crypto, they're going to watch that asset move into an indexed price, which I think is $60,000. The ADGM, which is the, uh, in, you, let's talk about the UAE, because this is a fantastic question. Last month, I got my uh, UAE citizenship. And, and I did that to go through the scrutiny of the background checking so I could act as an operator and an indexer in that market and, and a fi financial services entity. And so that was a lot of work and it was worth it. I've been trying for three years and they don't grant many of them. So the, it, when you look at UAE, it's Abu Dhabi is 95 percent of the capital. So you have to operate out of there. It's called the ADGM. And they set policy on crypto. They grant licenses for exchanges. But here's the thing that they won't do. They will not, let's call it, jump hop the SEC. They will not do this and make it a standard for their own sovereign wealth before the SEC gets a chance to move. And the reason for that is really political in nature. The largest manager of sovereign wealth in the world is BlackRock. That's Larry Fink. He's not going to do this until he gets the go-ahead from the SEC. And so they're not going to ever mess around with their largest manager. And Larry's telling them, and I'm speculating this, okay, I don't know this for certainty, but he's saying, let's just wait. Because when we get the SEC to approve this, whatever approval it is, and we'll build you the infrastructure so you can mark to market it so that you're, you're staying compliant in, in your mandates, then they're going to put on their waiting. And so... I think this thing is going to happen after the midterms, after we get the policy unstable, 
they're going to start looking at Bitcoin. I don't know which regulator is going to get to regulate it because there's a turf war going on. But you, if you're a speculator and an investor like the three of us are looking at this and, and, and you both of you guys are so down the rabbit hole as I am, I need to be there ahead of this decision because it'll happen quickly and you won't get be able to put on your position and the, the market will move against you so fast. I am extremely optimistic uh, on Bitcoin and Ethereum over the next call of 24 months. And the way you should measure your enthusiasm or curb it maybe is they struck down the Bitcoin ETF just weeks ago, even though the Canadians have one. And I believe that the OSC, which regulates the Canadian ETF of Ethereum, which is mark to market real Bitcoin each day, okay, they basically are the petri dish for the SEC. They work so close together. In Canada, for example, you know how Coinbase is at war with the regulator right now. There's a company called Wonderfy with 700,000 accounts, 720,000 accounts regulated by the OSC. Canadians are allowed to trade 14 different tokens legitimately regulated with the authorities being tax reported. They're so advanced and we haven't even got there yet stateside. And so I think they're using Canada. UAE is talking to the OSC. Why do I know that? Because I own that company and I showed them the order from the OSC. And I, and I went to Abu Dhabi and sat down with the ADGM and said, why can't we use the Canadian order and build it here? And they are thinking about it. But I know they're hesitating because the FAB bank is the largest bank in the UAE. They want the central bank to regulate by second quarter 2023 after the midterms if the house flips. You get the Republicans on this. They're more they're way more pro crypto. Most of the bill initiatives are coming out of red states. And I don't want to be political. But if you get the House flipping, they'll put that on the agenda. But don't expect every token to be regulated. They're going to focus on the market capitalization and say, here's policy on Bitcoin. Here's policy policy on ETH. I think you want to be long after November 8th. I mean, this is everybody's got to speculate on what to do here. But you've seen the, the winter at the bottoms. We're slowly crawling out of the toilet here. Your, your portfolios are up, you know, 20, in some cases, 23 percent. I mean, our 20 percent position went down to 15.2. That's pain. That's pain, my friends. And, and our desk was saying, what do we do? What do we do? I said, we do nothing where we know we're in this this volatile asset class and we're going to have to wait for some policy. That's why whenever I talk about crypto now, I'm pro-regulation. I want the sovereigns backing me up with a bid every night. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree. The only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.